Hi everyone. I thought I would go ahead and just uh, make a video about the being able to select a specific region uh, with either the masking or the undo brush. That is a specific region where you want to work with something. For example, this cat, for ex um, I might want to bring up the light, but I might not want to bring it up everywhere because it's starting to look a little bit artificial. So what I might want to do, for example, is just work with the face or this area and that sort of thing. So there's two ways to do it. One is with the masking, which in certain ways is a little bit easier because what you can do is you can just go ahead and say, okay, I want to work with the, uh, the facial area and I'll just go ahead and mask that. I don't need to be too careful because I have some control over it when I'm done. Namely, I can feather it and then I can also use this range slider to really isolate the mask. For example, now what I can do is I can I can brighten up the face and you can see it won't brighten or change any other area of the image. And so it allows me to really just go ahead and work with this area and it doesn't change the rest of the image so it localizes it so I can really see what's happening. When things are matched you can use any control in the quick edit panel over here. And so what I can do is I can go ahead and I can bring this up a little bit, maybe add some contrast and some color and then I can press apply. Now what I might want to do is to work with another area. So I can go ahead and select the mask again. I can edit the mask and I don't really need this anymore. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and mark this area. And again, I don't really need to be too careful. In fact, a lot of masking really is about blending. And so um, feathering the mask, I can show the mask here and I can feather it. And the great thing about masking in Sage Light is that I can go ahead and do everything at once. I can dynamically change things and I can also dynamically change the mask. And so if um, if I see this getting too out of control, for example, I can play with the feather to blend it in and the range to help uh, narrow the mask and to just really get what I'm looking for. And I can also say that, you know, I want to go a little farther outside the mask and so I can just edit the mask as I'm using it. So now I've brightened the picture by using the mask pretty quickly with two different masks that I was able to draw in relatively short order. And one thing to keep in mind before I go on is that when you edit the masks, for example, if I go back in the mask, it's not like, say, an adjustment brush where I can only adjust one thing. I can adjust the, um, the saturation and the light and the hue and the fill light and anything I want inside of the mask and so you can use any of the quick edit controls when you're using the mask and that's pretty powerful because you're not just looking at one tool and brushing it in you select the area that you want and then you can control the area and then you can use any number of tools all at the same time to get a much more powerful effect without having to worry about adjusting one area and then another and then another and then not really exactly having complete control over it. Of course that doesn't look very good so I'll go ahead and just, just reset that maybe maybe even brighten it up a little bit and add some saturation that looks pretty natural. So now if I return to the original image what I want to show is the same thing using the undo brush where and and really why I prefer personally it's, it's really up to uh, the individual but in my case I prefer the undo brush and here's why. What I can do is I can go ahead and bring up the light a little bit, uh, get kind of the same image I had before. So you can see it's it's image wide. Uh, with the masking you're able to localize an area more. But let's go ahead and just move this up a little bit and uh, get something that looks pretty decent. You can see that it's pretty bright in here and uh, over here, but it's all, all, all obviously too bright in this area. But what I can do is I can go ahead and accept that and then I can use the undo brush and instead of having to, this is really another reason I made this video because I wanted to show this exact point where instead of saying, okay, I need to undo everything here because this is the state it, it's in, it's undoing back to where you were, which makes it difficult to work with. I mean, you can do it and under certain circumstances, depending on what area you're trying to localize, it's, it's the better thing to do. In this particular case, what I want to do is I want to press fill with undo buffer that gives me the image I started with. And then what I can do is I can lower the pressure and I can go ahead and start just painting back in, maybe a little more pressure, start painting back in what I did. And so you can see as I move along here, I can really control at an artistic and creative level what I want to do. And so I can see that maybe in here I got a little too bright. 
so I can go backwards a little bit and then maybe get into this eye to bring that eye out and that sort of thing. So one thing, uh, another thing I can use the mask for is the eye. So what I can do is if I just want to do this eye here, normally I can, in a lot of cases I can do both eyes at the same time, but because there are two different light levels here, uh, it's better just to do one at a time. And you can see that I was able to draw this mask very quickly because I, I have control over it with the feather and the range. And so when I bring this eye up, uh, I don't want to bring it up too much because it can start to look fake. Like if I br really bring it up, it'll, it'll definitely look fake. And uh, the rule of thumb that I follow is, is to get it to where I like it, but then bring it just a little bit back just to make sure. And then uh, I'm going to increase the saturation just to compensate a little bit for the light. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this other eye, but I'm going to do something on purpose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to overdo it because what I can do is I can bring it up and uh, let's just say I, I, I did this and then I pressed apply and then I realized it looks a little fake. It doesn't look exactly right. What I can do is I can use the undo brush again and with a very small pressure, I can go ahead and then just merge it with the one I started with. And so here's the one I started with, a little dark. Here's the one I did, a little bright, and so you can see that I was just able to, to merge them, and then I can go back and forth and do whatever I want, or I can press reset to start over, and um, and then uh, bring the pressure down again, and then just really bring it back in to where it looks normal. So you can mix the masking and the undo brush all together. And here's another good place to use the undo brush, the dodge and burn. I like the dodge and burn a lot. The problem is you don't really want to use small brushes. You don't want to just say, okay, I'm just going to dodge this area because it's too hard to control and you're better off using bigger brush strokes, much bigger brush strokes. And so here, you know, I'm using a good, you know, quarter of the image size. So that way I can just do these real quick brush strokes, maybe darken it a little bit. And then what I can do is I can use the undo brush to just paint back in what I want. And that way I can really tailor how it looks. And so here also what I can do is I can use the darken brush to create some contrast by his chin there to really bring that out. And so you can see that I can, I don't really need to use the undo brush on this one uh, since I was a little careful about it, but basically I can again use the undo brush. Here it wasn't really necessary at all, but you can see that it really does come in handy so that I don't have to be careful at all, especially with things like the dodge and burn and other things that I'm doing. Uh, it just allows me to really essentially create an entire image with some controls and then be very artistic and freeform about painting back in what I want or just starting with the original image and then putting back in what I wanted to keep. So here's a, another image and what I wanted to point out was is that sometimes if you're masking um, you know it can be tempting to want to draw a mask which is fine uh, actually I mean it's really the most accurate way but uh, there's a lot of help that Sage Light can give you. So I can go ahead and, and draw that if I want to, but I don't have to because what I can do is I can just go ahead and click on this butterfly and you can see it's really helped mask the butterfly and so I can go ahead and change the color of the butterfly if I want. But you can see that it hasn't masked it all completely, which it really shouldn't do. It's just really wanting to get the color and there's ways that I can deal with the color such as the, uh, the range. So I can add, the, uh, add some range. Another thing I can do is I can select the opposite of it and then I can go ahead and invert the selection. So you can see it's really gotten more of the butterfly. And then what I can do is I can use these controls. But what I can do is I can go into advanced masking and I can show the mask. And then what I can do is I can uh, commit it when I commit it, it's just as if I've drawn it. It puts it in the alpha channel like I've drawn it. And then what I can do is I can edit it, just like I could before, to really just put in the pieces that uh, that maybe it didn't get. And I can zoom in on that. And then I can also show the uh, opaque part of it, you know, for example, so I can just fill in what, um, what it didn't capture automatically. For instance, this edge area here, I might want that or I might not want that. If I'm changing the color, I may want to keep that the way it is or I may want to fill it in. I'm not really going to know until later. And then what I can do is I can go ahead and also subtract the parts that uh, that I didn't want either. And uh, just, just as before, it doesn't, it 
for most things it doesn't really need to be that accurate. It's one of the things you can do on the fly if you're if you're seeing an accuracy problem. You can you can just re-edit the mask and uh, um, deal with it as you see it. It'll just go ahead and get rid of that for me. Uh, again, this is just meant as as a quick overview and um, I get some more of that in there and uh, and so you can see that now the mask doesn't have these subtle areas in the green so now I'm really just masking the butterfly. This is really just meant as a quick overview. Another thing that you can use as a tool, you can see that it's really kind of capturing a little bit of the green. Let's say I wanted to get rid of that. I can click on the green and then I can say uh, subtract instead of add the mask, which it would, so it would just add to the mask. So here's the mask. If I click on the green, it's just going to add to whatever the mask already has in in the alpha channel where you commit it. So if I committed this, it, this would be the new mask. Right now, it's auto selecting only the green. So this is the actual mask, and this is what it would add. What I can do is I can press subtract from mask, and then I can use these range tools um, to just get rid of this green area but to keep the butterfly and then what I can do is I can use the fill brush and then I can just uh, swipe over the whole thing where it'll just go ahead and get rid of that for me uh, again this is just meant as, as a quick overview and um, let me get some more of that in there and uh, and so you can see that now the mask doesn't have these subtle areas in the green so now I'm really just masking the butterfly so this ends up being a case where the a new brush wouldn't necessarily work out depending on what you're doing. A lot of times you want that fuzzy nature where you know you're feathering the mask and and you want it to blend, but sometimes you don't. For example, if I wanted to change the color of this butterfly, so now I have complete control over it. And so if I wanted to change it from its blue to say kind of a nice yellow, I could go ahead and do that, and I could press apply. The nice thing is, because it's so well defined, I can press invert mask, and then I can go ahead and change the color of the rest of the picture, and then I can also bring down the the uh, the midtones, and I can make this kind of a nice blue if I want to, or something that kind of works with the uh, yellow, and really just do a whole lot of things. And so this is where, if I did the entire picture, the undo brush wouldn't necessarily be appropriate. But the nice thing is, is that there are a lot of tools to help you define these selections rather than just drawing them with the um, with the draw mask. You can help you can use the automatic tools and then and then also to help draw the mask to help refine the mask. And one interesting thing to note here is that you might have seen that at first it didn't catch this area. You can see why, because there's no color here. But you can catch that in other ways with the automatic automatic masking, but that's really a subject for another video. So anyway, that's uh, really what I wanted to say about the masking. I just thought it might make a, a, a video, a better video than it would an explanation on the discussion board. So hopefully this helped and uh, thanks for listening.